All right, this is the beginning of chapter six. Uh, we're going to be learning about the standard normal distribution and some calculations we can do about probabilities with the normal distribution. Uh, so in this chapter, we're combining the things that we just learned about probability with the things that we learned about uh, z-scores and normal distributions in unit one. So this chapter really ties everything together so far. And then this is the chapter that we will build on for the rest of the semester to learn about all our statistical tests. So normal distributions, we already know that normal distributions are bell-shaped. I'm just going to draw one over here. With the mean in the middle and three standard deviations out either way. The standard normal distribution is also, of course, bell-shaped because it's normal. And you could also call it symmetrical. And the other requirements, standard means we're going to use the Z scale that we also learned about in Unit 1. And in the Z scale, the mean is 0. And the standard deviation is 1. So if we put that on our distribution over here, we go up 3 and down 3 from the mean, which is 0. And that is our standard normal distribution. Again, the Z scale um, is on the x-axis. So remember the middle values close to the mean are more likely. and extreme values on the tails are less likely. So what we're going to add to this now is we're going to actually be calculating areas which are going to represent probabilities. So the total area underneath this curve equals 1. So maybe we could add that and area and probability are going to be equivalent. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about uniform distributions next, and then we'll come back to standard distributions, which is the main focus. All right, so uniform distributions mean any value or all the values are equally likely. We still have the mean in the middle, but now instead of a bell-shaped curve, every value has to be equally likely around the mean. So you end up with a rectangle shape. And in this case, the, the areas that you would calculate um, you can just use length times width, the calculation for area. In this case, width would actually be height. And the total area here, because in probability, all the possible probabilities have to add up to 1. So we're going to define our area equals 1. And again, area and probability are equivalent. So that's the uniform. Uh, we'll do some examples in the next video uh, with both standard normal distributions and uniform distributions. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave uniform distributions behind and keep learning more about the standard normal distribution. So again, standard normal distribution, the total area under the line of the graph is equal to 1.
values that are close to the center or the mean are more likely and the farther you go out away the less likely each value becomes and the standard normal distribution if you take a look in the back of your book uh, in the appendix A there's table A2 which is the Z table if you look up a particular value of Z the area is already calculated for you otherwise we'd have to use you know, calculus equations to determine the area under a curve um, but in this case it's all calculated for us already so the x-axis of the standard normal distribution are z-scores and we learned already that the z-scores is just how many standard deviations the value is away from the mean. The values in the table for each z-score are areas from that particular z to the minimum value. which is all the area to the left of that z-score. So let's just take a quick look at what that means. Say you had a z-score of z equals 1, which would be right here. If you were to look up z equals 1 in table A2, the area that corresponds to that in the table is the area to the left. So it would be, include all this shaded area. Okay. So the next one here, if, if you want the area to the right, so the shaded area is area to left, and that's in the table. If you need the other area, the area to the right, you would have to do one minus the area in the table. So subtract from 1. To obtain the area to the right of a z-score. You can also subtract areas from each other to obtain the, er the probability of being between two z-scores. So let's look at what that would look like. So if you wanted the area between you know, z is negative 1.5 and z of 1.5, if you were to look these up in table A2, you'd get the area to the left for negative 1.5, and you'd get the area to the left of 1.5. And what you would do if you wanted the area in between is just take the area to the left of 1.5 and subtract the tail end. Which would be what's to the left of negative Another thing you can do with z-scores is if you have an area or a probability, you can look that up in the table and get the corresponding z-score and then work backwards to find out what value of x that would be on your scale. So just a quick, um, this one's kind of important, uh, use two decimal places for z-scores and four decimal places for area. So just a quick reminder of our equations. Z equals some value of x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And then you can look up z in the table to get your probability. If you have a probability and you want to work backwards, you can use a probability to find a z-score and then use this equation to work backwards and get your value for x. So I have a couple of problem solving tips for these kinds of problems. 
First one, always draw your diagrams. So whenever you're given a problem, always draw your normal distribution. Put the mean in the middle. Put your you know, standard deviations along the axis and then shade what you're looking for. So make draw your line wherever you need to for a problem and shade in what you're looking for. That way you can check to make sure that your answer makes sense when you're done. Okay. Um, another tip, z-scores remember are distances away from the center or the mean. Typically z-scores will be between about negative 3 to positive 3 or but they can be lower or higher. You might get a value of z for as negative 10. You shouldn't assume that you made a mistake, you just assume that whatever you're calculating has a very low probability. Okay. Um, for areas, areas are always between 0 and 1. Okay. So z scores can be negative or positive, typically not very large numbers, but they can be. And areas are always positive and between 0 and 1. And then the last thing uh, I'm going to save until we do examples, but we can um, do critical values of z um, when we're looking at finding probabilities of things. So that wraps up the introduction. Uh, the next video will have some examples of how we calculate z-scores and probabilities for certain values of x.